Hey guys, welcome back. Richie here for another quick bench update to let you guys know what I've been up to, what I've purchased, what I'm working on, all that kind of stuff. So today is February the 6th, 2021. Can you believe already it's February? It's just time flies by. I'm working from home, the days kind of blend into weeks and the weeks into months and it all kind of blends into one, right? So, so what we're going to do is I'm going to firstly put my camera down to the table and I'll show you what I've been working on. I've got three projects. Um, two, well one finished, one's almost finished, and one's kind of halfway through. So I've got a car, a plane, and a tank, so you can't get much more diverse than that, right? So let me switch the camera down, and then let's kind of talk about the what I've been working on. Okay, this is my smorgasbord of projects I've been working on. Quite, you see it from a pink car, to a tank, to an aircraft. So I'll see the beautiful F-14 in the background. I'm just gonna scoop this out of the way, um, and then let's talk about what we actually finished first, and we'll work on the in progress. So, so this guy right here is this, which is Rifle Models 35th scale M181 Abrams 1991 Desert Storm Edition. Um, yeah, great kit. Now, problem with this one is, I move the box to the side here. Um, it's went together really, really well, but the only problem is the um, instructions were crap. Like, it's so vague. You have like add something and like a line point to the picture and it wouldn't show exactly where it went. So it was really kind of, move back there, zoom in a little bit for you guys. It was really kind of a challenge to kind of get this guy um, together. It was it was tough. So I built, built it out of the box and um, I had this in my stash for like five years. The M1A1 storage set from Legend. It has all the like cardboard boxes, has all the storage and resin. So I went ahead and did all that stuff. Um, so I do like a tank with stowage. I think it looks really nice. I was going to do a base on it, but then a foam base. But by the time I added cost of the foam color and the foam and the base, it was like 30 bucks. I was like, I'm not going to pay for that right now. So sometime in the future, I might set a little base. Um, just kind of move around so you can see some other angles of this. One thing too with this guy is those keen, keen eyes would see. It doesn't have guide horns on the tracks. Um, you can't see that stuff. I mean, the side skirts and stuff. but. They were just so hard to cut off the sprue. The, the attachment point is right in the middle. It kind of blocked everything. It would take a ton of cleanup, a ton of work. I just couldn't be bothered. So I'd lose, lose all my mojo doing it. So I just didn't bother putting guide horns on. Um, for me, it's fine the way it is. Again, it's, you're not going to see it. So I really kind of like how you know, the, the blue cooler and the red coolers and stuff really kind of pick out some color in this. So I'm just going to move this guy around again. So I painted with how I like to do all desert modern armors, Mission Models, US Desert. Um, this sprays really nicely. No flat coats or no clear coats at all on this, just straight paint. And then I came on top of that paint with oil. So how I do my aircraft, you see them all the time. Um, I think I used Starship Filth for this one. I just kind of added some dirt. And at the very bottom, I added some grime wash, just sprayed on with the airbrush at the bottom a little bit. But that's the um, M1A2. Again, really kind of love this tank. I'm really kind of happy it turned out. Uh, I could have gone more on this one and more weathering and stuff, but you know, I, I kind of lose, lose my mojo a little bit with armor, and I, towards the end, I kind of, you know, get all the storage painting and stuff, I was kind of ready to move on. So, um, yeah, one thing to note, all the, all the, um, the storage stuff, I used uh, Citadel washes, I used the Agraf Earthshade, which is the brown color, and that worked fantastically, all the bags, and adding all like, the detail and stuff to, to everything. So, yeah, so this is the, um, again, spinning it around, this is the Abrams. I'm really happy how it turned out. Also the kit, Two, I think I think the box, I think the same box you could probably build an M1A2. There's like tons of extra parts and sprues in there, and even you have a lot of storage of two in actual box. So like a lot of water bottles and stuff actually came in a, in the in the rifle pack with the kit, and there's tons more. There's like there's probably like 20 water bottles, plastic water bottles on there. Obviously, I only used two or three on mine, but but yeah. So that's that one. I'm just gonna move that one off. Next up is. Something I'm doing for a group build of flooring models, I'm doing the 60s group build, so it has to be something from the 60s. So I picked this guy out, let me zoom him out a little bit, wrong way. The Camaro 69Z28 RS. Now, cool car, when I do muscle cars, I always kind of like to do yellow with black stripes. That's kind of my thing, I guess, what I like. But this time I'll do something a little bit different. So put your sunglasses on. Here it is, hot pink. So. I was in Hobby Lobby, move that box out of the way, as you, as you do, and I got the kit, and then I looked at the paint, I was like, what paint do they have? And randomly, they had like a Testers Hot Pink Pearl Metallic. I was like, wow, that's a really cool color, obviously pink. So I thought, you know, with the white stripes or black stripes, it'd probably make it pop and look really cool. So 
I bought that paint and I thought, you know, having a father of two daughters, I thought, you know what, if this thing doesn't turn out good or whatever, at the end of it, I can just give it to the kids and they can fall around with it. So I painted this hot pink. Now, that was one of the worst colors I ever had in my life to spray. It never, it didn't cover at all. It was really, really bad. I took like 20 coats. Um, once the paint's on and clear coated with LP9, it looks good. Um, I've still, I just put the decals on earlier today, um, the stripes. I just need to, um, to clear coat over them and seal them in. Um, and then the bod top, this body is pretty much done. Um, there's fingerprints and stuff on it just from me touching it. Um, it wipes right off. Um, but yeah, hot pink. I mean, the pain in the ass spray, but I think it looks something a little bit different and I kind of like it. Um, the stripes are a pain to put on. The decals are one big stripe, even though the um, this guy comes off. So you have to cut them. And as you can see closely, I actually um, ripped one of the decals. So I had to get a piece of another white, white one and stick it on top. So, I mean, it's noticeable, but from the close up, I can see it, but from distance, you can't see it. So it is what it is. So yeah, that's the, um, oh, another mess up I made with this guy too is, I didn't paint the spot, I didn't realize the spoiler that's body colored that goes on the back. So I didn't bother with the spoiler because as I just mentioned, painting this thing pink was just a pain in the ass. It took like two, one or two days, like constantly spraying coats and getting it done. And I, to be honest, I already softened the decal. So what I had to do is just kind of tweak, because the decals go over the spoiler and round it, they were a little bit too long. So I had to kind of cut them and kind of do a little bit of work to get them to fit nice, which in the end, I think I did okay. But yeah, the spoiler was a little bit um, bummer, but hey, so, hey, this one has no spoiler, I guess. So. There you go. So yeah, my hot pink Cam nine, nine, six nine Camaro. So I've got a few days now. I'm expecting my. I've ordered a Mang FA eighteen E Hornet. So that's going to show up in the upcoming week, hopefully. So I've got a few days now. So I'm going to probably plow on and work on a running gear and get the interior done on this one. Get this one worked on too. So that's the pink Camaro. And then the star of the show for me is this little guy. Which I'm going to have to zoom out further. Keep going the wrong way. And this is the beautiful Tamiya F14A in the VF1 Wolfpack markings. So fantastic kit. This is actually a video build. I filmed nine parts on this. It's gone through every single part, how I painted, wherever I did, put it together. And that's going to go up later, um, probably later this year. It's going to go up once I've you know, edited it and that kind of stuff. But it's going to be about nine parts. Um, so I bought, as you guys remember in my previous updates, I bought a ton of aftermarket for this. Like I bought like two big sin resin packs. I bought all kinds of stuff. And in the end, it didn't need it. So all the weapons are the kit weapons, which are fantastic. The cockpit is a kit, kit cockpit. You, you seeing it here, you would never ever see the resin one inside it. So the actual work and stuff needed for that. I just couldn't be bothered doing it. Um, the exhaust nozzles are at the kit. Um, the only aftermarket I did use was a phase hanger resin. So I cut the back end off and I put in the different beaver tail. And on this side, there's um, a seven vent gun panel, which is for the, this particular version of F-18A. So that's the, that aftermarket and obviously the decals. And I think that was it really, to be honest with you. So the only thing I wanted to do is add some seats. So as you can see now, there's no seats. So they just arrived literally today. Um, these are the GRU-7 ejection seats um, from True Details. Although Squadron's actually gone bankrupt um, as of a couple of weeks ago. So you probably won't be able to get these anymore. But, Nice resin seats. So I'm going to paint these up um, and then they go in, in that and this finished. Everything else is on. The pitos are on. Um, everything. So, yeah, really kind of happy how it turned out. Um, the, these are micro scale decals and they weren't that good to be honest with you. They didn't, I had some issues. I'm missing a couple of things too. Um, I'm missing, I don't have a round door for the wings. So, so, there's nothing on the wings, but at some point in the future, I can always add that if I want to. It's missing the numbers for the tail, never came in a pack and a few other little things. But overall, really kind of happy how this one turned out. Um, really do love a Tomcat. And, oh, just know the p tube's a little bit bent. Straighten it. Um, yeah, I'm really kind of happy how this one, I didn't go crazy weathering. I obviously weathered it up, but didn't go, you know, really ridiculously weathered on this. But yeah, so again, this is a video build. Um, it's gonna put, do the seats this weekend and then get those in and then this one's finished. So yeah, being busy, that's what I'm up to. So. Yeah, that's really my projects. Nice variety from a pink car to a tank to a plane. Um, yeah, so there you go. So let me switch the camera back to me and then we can talk about um, a couple of purchases I just got received. So there you go, that's it. Been pretty busy as always. A um, lot of variety and stuff working on which kind of keeps the mojo going. So not much to report in terms of purchases. Uh, as I mentioned already, I finally got resin seats, true details. That way, um, so I'm gonna get these painted up in the F14, and that one's done. 
So that's just to finish it off. Also, I got this big guy just arrived today. I think you've seen a lot of this on YouTube. The 48 scale Hobby Boss MV22 Osprey. Awesome looking kit. Uh, I was thinking about doing a review of this, but there's no real, no real point because if you look across at Chris at Becker's models, he just recently posted a really good review of this. Um, one of the best reviews and more kits I've seen in a very long time, and not only because it's just a review, but he actually took the time to take it out of the box and actually um, put it together, dry fit it, and um, check check how it fits together. So really good review. So shout out, if you want to see a review of this one, just go ahead to Becker's Models, and um, it's up there already. Really good um, 15, 20 minutes or so review of this one. Um, looks fantastic. I was going to start this immediately, but I had a change of plan. Um, I'm, I want to, because you see so much in the back here, I want to super detail it. So before I get going and start working on this, I just want to give it a few months to see what aftermarket comes out especially in terms of cockpit um, stuff and also the back here. So before I start scratch building things, I want to see what comes out next this spring and summer. So I'm gonna hold this one back for a few months, do this later in the year, maybe as a video build. Um, but like I say, I want to super detail the back of it and I just want to wait and see what the manufacturers bring out in terms of aftermarket on this one. But yeah, big kit. Um, just one markings, which is a little bit um, a shame, but you can get um, tons of aftermarket decals for this already. Um, I'm sure there'll be tons more as well. So that's that big guy. Um, and that is really it. Um, I did, and I have ordered the the main FA-18E Hornet. That should be here the upcoming week. So as soon as I get that one, I'll get a review of that one put up for sure. And I'm going to probably do a video build it. Depending how it looks in the box, which I think it's going to be fantastic, I'm going to do a video build. So a lot of people are keen to see that one, so I might bump my F-14 and put that one up next, um, kind of live as I build it, get those episodes up. So we'll get the 15C Great War Hobbies kit finished. Then, the, then I think I might switch on to the Meng and do post do a full video build because I'm, I'm itch, itching to do a Hornet. I've been look at my 32nd scale Growler, Trump's the one I got my stash there, um, and almost started building it. But with the Meng one arriving, it makes I think it's perfect timing. So who knows? Maybe even do a top gun scheme with Pete Pete Mitchell. So <laughs> there we go. So play it by ear. But most probably I'm going to do that. I'm probably bump the F14. So we'll finish the 15. I'll go into the Hornet. When Meng start doing video build and posting it as I do it, and then once that finished, I'll go post up the 14 um, Tomcat series. That really happy how that turned out. Um, love the ball pack markings, and um, yeah, really looking over it there, really kind of happy that one. So that's really it. Um, enough waffling for me. Um, as always, thank you everybody for watching. Appreciate all the new subscribers, all the kind comments, all the rest of the stuff. As always, any questions, please put them in the comments. I reply to them all. Um, if I'm busy, it may not be within a couple of hours, it might be a day, but pretty much within 24 hours, everybody I've responded to, um, unless it's trolling, of course. Um, so that's it. So again, have a great time, everybody, uh, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.